did you know that you can make the spirit bomb a one hit KO? If you didn't, we'll get into that later. But if you did, by the end of this video, I promise you, you'll know something about Goku that you didn't before. These are secrets about Goku that you missed in Dragon Ball video games. We all know Goku to be one of the strongest in the Dragon Ball universe. But at the time of Budokai 1, he was really the strongest in the game. This game had a 10% increase to attack power for each transformation, meaning whoever had the most transformations would be the strongest. And guess who has the most transformations in the game? The, the videos about Goku, who, who else would it be? The transformations along with the combination of capsules you can give him to increase his attack, make him legit broken. But imagine if this was still a thing like now. Him going from Kyle Ken times five all the way to like master UI would be absolutely insane. Let me have some of your energy. This game also does something that surprisingly doesn't happen in a lot of the games. But in the series, Goku wore a lot of different geese with different symbols, and they told you who he was training under at the time. And throughout the sagas, this obviously changes. Goku's gi actually changes based on which part of the story you're playing, and that does not happen in a lot of the other games. This is one of the reasons though why I think that this game still holds up visually. Speaking of his gi, one of the most iconic variations of his gi didn't get introduced as a playable costume in the Budokai games until Budokai 2, and not even in the original US release. It came in the Japanese version and the GameCube version as an additional costume. The tattered gi paired with the Super Saiyan is a classic combo and it shouldn't be left out of any game in my opinion. They also use Budokai 2 to continue his streak of being kind of broken by having him have the most ultimates in the game. He had the Warp Kamehameha, the Spirit Bomb, and of course, the Super Spirit Bomb. You are awesome! I can't wait to see what you'll do next time! Later! <laughs> Now Budokai 3 didn't add much in terms of secrets that I felt like you guys didn't already know, but if you do know some, you can comment them down below. The only thing that I could find that is somewhat of a secret is his Halo costume, and the only way that you can even access that is through the code which can be seen right here. Now I'm not gonna lie, I actually do really like the costume. The Halo, it just adds, I don't know, it's something about it. Infinite World seemed to shift the focus to GT Goku when it came to the details because he has one of the best ultimates in the game, hands down. This animation of the Super Kamehameha in particular is a reference to how he got rid of Staff Officer Black in the movie Dragon Ball Path to Power. It's more reminiscent of how Master Roshi would do the full Kamehameha, but with some extra flair from the camera going around. And I think it's easily the best looking ultimate in the game, if not the whole series. He also has some cut content as he was going to be playable on Snake Way. Now I do kind of wonder why they didn't make him playable. Maybe he was too short, so he travels less distance per stride or something, making it harder, if not impossible to complete with a respectable time. Oh, not to mention, the controls were already like super wonky. Remember when I said a lot of the games don't actually even change his gi? Well, Tenkaichi 1 is one of them. This whole game stuck him in his late gi and just kind of went for it. Now, it isn't that big of a deal to me personally, but I know that, you know, this burns the purest blood not being able to see Goku with his feet out. Another interesting thing about the Tenkaichi series are the interactions between characters. And the most interesting one to me regarding Kid Goku specifically is his response when people refer to him as Kakarot. He says, Kakarot, is that you? I'm not this Kaka whatever guy. 
And this comes from the 17th manga volume chapter, Tales of Future Not Quite Past, in which adult Goku says this to Raditz when Raditz calls him Kakarot. Now, obviously, Kid Goku has his memory wiped, you know, when he fell and he bumped his head. But Tenkaichi 2 takes it a step further and makes it to where Goku seems to think that him and Kid Goku are two entirely different people. How come you're wearing an outfit that looks like mine? You look just like I did when I was little. Ready? Now, I guess this does kind of make sense because if you saw your younger self in front of yourself and didn't have any memory of that, then it would have to be another person, right? Now, I did mention something about a one hit KO spirit bomb, right? Well, in Tenkaichi 3, Goku actually gets the ability to gain energy from everything around him, just like he did in the series, so he can charge the spirit bomb. Now, you can charge it up to three times, and this actually changes the damage output significantly. So much so that you can actually one-shot most people, if not all, with the right setup. Now, it's hard to pull off, but it's more than possible. Okay, let's see what games are next.